Hey guys, this is COK Gaming here, and today I am back with another um, scripting tutorial. And um, today it's going to be a little bit different. Um, I've been experiencing some of these problems myself, so I decided, hey, I wanted to share some uh, solutions, I guess. So um, what I'm going to be talking about is just how to reduce your lag in your game, pretty much. Yep, simple as that, although it's not quite as simple, in some ways at least. <clears throat> So, I'm just going to uh, run through a few scenarios, and, um, yeah, I hope I can help in some way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let's start. So, one of the main problems um, that I had, of course, I'm going to start off with that, was me having way too many parts in my game. So, sometimes, uh, sorry, uh, at some point in my game, I had over a thousand parts, and... For me, I, I don't I don't think that uh, I, I I like that very much, but pretty much it looks something like this. You know, just get some time. But pretty much you you can see where I'm going. There's just way too much parts, and you know nothing gets nothing really goes on. There's just way too much parts. And you can actually see wh um, why this kind of lags sometimes. And, sorry, I don't know why I said that. But you can kind of guess what I'm trying to get to here. And that is just it, the render. Or, in other words, um, the, the player's uh, ability to kind of see everything. Like, the processing of where everything is. So, actually... Um, here's a quick keybind, just to, uh, just in case C, maybe check some things out. Um, by pressing, uh, Control F6, you, um, you could get this right here. And this is basically, say, showing, uh, how, how fast these things compute. So you can see the CPU and GPU time. Those are pretty much just how fast the game runs. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the best at computers, but I, at least I know that. Anyways, by going into mode over here and doing and go, and selecting detailed, you can actually oh my, remember to pause it if you want to look at detailed. But as you can see here, you can kind of see things going on. You can kind of check out each one. But I personally don't usually use this as I don't know. It just seems like it kind of does it. Uh, sorry, it takes a lot of time, and usually there is sometimes a faster way. So. There is a couple solutions to this many parts problem. The first one is to, well, delete the blocks. Of course, I know that that sounds very, very uh, stupid, but hey, it, it, it works. It, it works really well. But sometimes you can't do that. For in a, in a case, maybe you're doing some mining simulator game, I guess. There's going to be so much blocks around, right? But if you wanted to delete some of the blocks, then the players would literally just mine out of the map or out of their own little mining spot. And you don't want the game to break either way. So the, so the second way is actually to turn on fog. So you can see down in lighting, and if you go all the way down, you go to fog end and fog start. Now, I would, now depending on uh, how much visibility you want your game to have, you can set this to whatever you want. Of course, fog N at 100,000 will be like, oh, there's no fog anywhere. But let's say you do it to maybe 200. You can see that the fog has kind of come up everywhere. But the reason why fog is good is because it doesn't have to process the colors or the materials or any of the textures or anything. No, it's just one standard color for most of it. Which, uh, for, for me, it actually really helped a lot. So, yeah, that was, uh, overall really good. So I'm just gonna, um, turn up the fog a bit so you can see a bit better. But the next thing is, um, sorry, next thing is that if there's a lot of, uh, moving or dynamic blocks. So let's say you have a bunch of stuff that has anchored off. So, of course, there's probably gonna be a lot of blocks coming, you know, up and down, up and down, you know, wherever you want it to go. But this actually creates a 
lot of lag, like a lot. Um, in a simple in a simple example, um, there were uh, around two hundred players playing, and because of everyone that's moving, it got super laggy. Like, I don't know, you could barely even play. So sometimes, if you don't need a block to move at a certain point, just anchor it from the uh, studio so that it can reduce lag. It really helps once again. Or let's say you do need to have it move, but let's say maybe it has to stop at some point. Well, when it stops, you can actually just create a script and simply reference anchored and set it to true whenever you want it. <clears throat> and uh, one more strategy I like to use is just in general removing textures as much as you can. So sometimes you have like these textures, you know, stuff like that, and these play quite a big role in uh sorry in creating lag. Like no matter if it's a decal, if it's some like screen sorry, uh yeah, decal, image, texture, like if you can reduce its sorry. If you can reduce its uh oh well. But oh sorry, there you go. If you can reduce the quality of the image to a level where it's actually where it's pleasing to the human eye and it's not like whoa like it's only like five pixels wide so try to find that sweet spot in uh the decals and stuff if not just try to delete them uh, as a whole try using the uh materials over here these usually um are a relatively good uh, replacement for the decals, so that's another thing to do. <clears throat> and another, um, yeah, actually, that's pretty much it for the parts in general, and just how to reduce lag in those types of terms. But there is also one more thing inside the part that usually helps, and that's the sparkles. Now, when you're doing sparkles, or actually, what? Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Sorry, particles, there we go. So, particle emitters, you know, pretty pretty good thing to have around. But the thing is that you can put textures in here. And these textures can literally be like a thousand by, like thousands of pixels wide. And that creates a lot of lag as well. So, really, you just need, you don't really need anything bigger than a hundred by a hundred image, really. like. 25 by 25 works very well too. Just uh, also try to keep the particle um, lifetime and the part and the amount of particles just to a lower level. That that usually helps a lot if you have a bunch of particle emitters. Even reducing it, even if you have one particle emitter and you reduce it by half, like that that helps too. Um, like a significant amount. Sorry. So that's pretty much it for particle emitters. Another one is the uh, shadow map. So for shadow map, you can see that it automatically generates these shadows whenever a part is here. Now, sometimes when you have, let's say, um, just a, an arrangement of blocks, some blocks don't really need to have a shadow because, well, either a shadow kind of covers over them or it's just not really necessary. And sometimes that it, it is the case, actually. So, these shadows, once again, create quite a lot of lag as, you know, there's got to be a lot of calculations, got to depend on how much light, you know, has to be spread around and stuff like that. Now, there are two ways to reduce this. First of all, it's um, lowering the shadow softness. Now, this makes it, I know, this, this doesn't look too smooth or anything, and that's okay. You can, you can turn up the shadow softness if you want. But another thing you can do is actually go to the part itself and turn off cast shadow. This just makes it not have a shadow whatsoever. This really helps in some times. Um, in cases where you, like, let's say it's floating. And the shadow's like way off into the distance. Technically, you don't really need cast, sh uh, cast shadow on. You can just turn it off. Because you, you aren't going to see the shadow anyways. And seriously, if it's floating in the air and you just see some random shadow down here, I don't, I don't, I don't think it'd be, uh, pretty, pretty good. 
Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, shadows in general. Now, there are a couple more different ways, uh, and there's probably way more in Indeed. But here are some extra ones you can kind of keep in mind. The first one is actually going into settings over here and going to rendering. Yeah, um, you can press OK on this. It's just saying that sometimes uh, changing these do kind of make Roblox go a little bit crazy, but most likely nothing will happen. Now, inside rendering, you're going to see these things over here. Um, focus on these two up top here, quality level and edit quality level. Now, in the game, quality level, if you set it to automatic, that's um, the bar in the settings that says, well, quality. Now, of course, you, get, you can change this to manual if you want. And usually, you, you can. But over here, this actually changes it so that, oh, uh, the quality level, you can actually set it to yourself. Like, it doesn't ha always have to be automatic from the start of the game. So maybe you can change it to 21 if you want. Remember to do edit quality level 2. I mean, level 6, I don't know. But um, the lower the quality level, the less computing time uh, the servers take to actually <clears throat> to, well, compute things. So this can reduce your lag too. And one more thing is actually trying to merge scripts. And you may not know what I mean, but uh, uh, I guess I'll show you right now. So let's say we have two scripts. I'm just going to quickly write a quick uh, script here. Let's say print hi. Let me get a wait. And let's say we clone that. So I'll name this script. Okay. I'll name this script one and script two. Now in script one and script two, actually what? I'm going to change script one to say hi and this will say bye. Now Technically, you really don't need script 2 and script 1. You can merge these two and just have it in one script. Because if you have two scripts right here, first of all, that's like, that's double the amount of scripts. And second, you have two wild true do loops going on right now, even though that you really only need one. You see, by taking out by or high and putting it into the other one, this is actually way more efficient than having two wild true do scripts or in or any scripts in general try to reduce your uh, script amount as much as you can i cannot stress this enough if you have like 50 wild true do scripts running at the same time your game is going to lag so yeah this is just a quick example because technically this is going to work uh just as efficient as two scripts working uh separately because it's just going high, bye, high, bye, high, bye. While on the other one, it's just going at the same time, you know, things are probably going to go crazy before you know it. So that's pretty much all I really have to uh, say about reducing lag. Of course, there are many other methods, you know, you can probably find some yourself, but here are just a you know few starter tips on reducing your game's lag. So... Anyways, um, that's pretty much all I have for you today, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I also sh surely hope this helps you in some way, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye!